Good morning to all our family and friends. It's a joy to see all of you joining us in worshiping the Lord today. Welcome to GCF Northwest Worship Celebration. As we begin to worship the Lord, I would like for us to reflect on the Word of God found in Psalm 91 verses 1 and 2. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. This is the declaration of trust and confidence by David. He gave us a picture of God as our fortress and refuge, that He is the one who will continue to protect us and stabilize our lives during tough and trying times. I pray that as we worship Him wholeheartedly, as we continue to trust Him and obey His will every day of our lives, the reality of these truths will become an everyday experience of our lives. Let's join our hearts in praising and worshiping the Lord today. Good morning, everyone. This morning, we are here to worship our God and to hear His message for all of us. So this morning, will we be ready to listen? Will we have hearts that are humble before Him? And let us worship Him this morning. Oh, 
is our firm foundation. As we wait for His coming, let us continue to trust and obey the Lord. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Jesus Christ of how we must live our lives to please Him, to worship Him. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame but holy trust in Jesus' name. My hope, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest way. But holy trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, corn and soul, weak made strong in the same. 
greatest love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide its face, I rest on His unchanging in every heart and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. My anchor holds within the veil. Christ alone, cornerstone, we.
thank you for example. We thank you for your guidance that we can live our lives according to your will. That we can build our lives in your love. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever sing. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever sing. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes. In wonder, show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. No one like you 
there is no beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. I will build my life upon your love. Let's continue in the attitude of worship as we join our hearts in praying to the Lord. Lord, what a joy to experience you every day of our lives. Your presence is real in our hearts. And as we join our hearts in worshiping you, Lord God, we pray that you will continue to refresh our hearts and our minds that we will experience your faithfulness, your love, and kindness every day of our lives. Father, we praise you for how you continue to sustain us through life's difficult and trying times. Panginoon, kami po ay nagpupuri at nagpapasalamat dahil ikaw po ang Diyos naming dakila at tapat sa lahat ng oras. Anuman, Panginoon, ang amin pong kalalagayan, anuman po ang amin pong pinagdadaanan, ikaw po ay kasama namin at nariyan ka. Handa kaming tulungan, saklulohan sa lahat ng kaparaanan. Lord God, we know that we are still in pandemic. We are going through various kinds of difficulties and and, and destructions of our lives. But I pray, Lord God, that all of us will be focused on obeying you. The things that we have learned every day from your word, from the experience that, that you allow us to face. We pray, Father, that you will continue to give us wisdom, that you will uh, speak to our hearts and that we will always be open to what you are telling us. Panginoon, may kanya-kanya po kaming mga problema sa pamilya, sa pananalapi, and even, Panginoon, sa aming pong mga relasyon. Ngayong Panginoon ay aming pong sinusuko ang aming mga sarili. Kung kami po ay may mga problema, mayroong pong pagkakamali, Panginoon, that your Spirit will convict us and that we would come humbly to you and to people that we have wronged. Panginoon, patawarin mo po kami sa aming po mga kasalanan. Allow us, Lord God, to always search our hearts by the, by, by the conviction of the, of the Holy Spirit so that we will always be pure and clean and be able to live a holy life pleasing to you. Panginoon, dalangin po namin yung mga may sakit po sa aming pong pamilya, sa aming pong mga kakilala at mga kaibigan. Ikaw po, Panginoon, ang magpagaling po sa kanila. We pray, Father, that you will touch their bodies and they will experience healing and comfort and that they will recover into good health from their situation right now. Allow, Lord God, those struggling financially and materially to experience and see your faithfulness in their lives. We pray, Father, that relationships will be restored those that are broken, Panginoon, Ikaw po ang magkaloob ng pagkakataon na ito po ay manumbalik sa maayos at tamang relasyon muli. Lord God, today we open our hearts to what You are going to tell us. 
that you would renew our minds to the truths that you have in store for us. Use your word, Lord God, to speak to our hearts and convict us by the power of the Holy Spirit so that we will not end our worship time this morning together with our family and friends. And we will, and this day will not end without a change in our lives brought about by the Holy Spirit and your spoken word this morning. We offer to you this day, we offer to you our lives that indeed we will all be, we will be doing all the things that pleases you and that we would become a blessing to more people. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Our scripture for today comes from Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. From the English Standard Version, let's read all together. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine does not do them will be like a foolish man who builds his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. May God bless the reading of His word. Good morning. Let us prepare our hearts and minds as we listen to God's word through our speaker, Pastor Jerry Agoncillo. Rooted and ready for life's challenges. From Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 27. A blessed morning to all of you. In 1990, the Hyatt Terraces Hotel in Baguio City collapsed due to a 7.7 .7 magnitude earthquake that struck Luzon. More than 50 people died in the hotel due to that earthquake on July 16. 1990. You would probably still remember what happened in 2009. The tropical storm on Doi poured in unprecedented amounts of rain and caused widespread flooding in the entire Metro Manila and some parts of northern and southern Luzon in just a few hours on September 26, 2009. It was followed by another strong tropical storm, Piping, in just over a week. More than 1,000 people were reported dead and missing with more than 4 billion US dollars worth of damages and loss combined. Again, in November 8, 2013, one of the most powerful typhoons in the whole world, locally named Yolanda, is struck hard in the Visayas group of islands, specifically Leyte. And more than 6,000 people died and more than 1,000 more were missing. An overall estimate of almost 6 billion US dollars worth of properties and goods were destroyed and washed away. 
but nothing is more devastating in matters of lives lost and affected and the total cost on the whole world's economy than the COVID-19 pandemic. We are still in pandemic and our lives are still so much affected and limited by COVID-19. It changed all our lives permanently, both positively and negatively. If you have lived long enough, you know that no one is free from troubles and tests in our lives and lifetimes. There are numbers of calamities and crises that come our way every now and then. But there is one truth I want us to understand when these tough and trying times come. They will reveal who we are from the inside out. They would either make us or break us. Let's pause in prayer and open our hearts to the Lord's message for all of us from His Word. Father, we open our minds, we open our hearts to what you are going to tell us. We ask the Holy Spirit to deposit these truths in our hearts that will change our lives for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The passage we have today was the concluding story Jesus taught on the Sermon on the Mount, where we put the theme, the kingdom life agenda of Jesus, based on Matthew chapters 5 to 7. I entitled our sermon today, Rooted and Ready for Life's Challenges, based on Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 27. God allows all these problems to define and differentiate the genuine believers from the make-believers or those who are just pretending. Storms and shocks of our lives shake and show what kind of foundation we have in life. Having the right and solid foundation will help you grow into a better person, a true follower and disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. Tests and trials will always expose our true character and the foundational values we hold in our lives. Let me summarize our lesson today. A believer's life is rooted in true faith that is marked by faithful obedience to God. A believer's life is rooted in true faith that is marked by faithful obedience to God. We will be looking at the three, three pairs of contrast and comparisons on what Jesus told his audience on that eventful day. Through his story, he continues to teach all of us today about how we can live faithfully as children of God in his kingdom. In the past lessons, Jesus told us about two kinds of people, the hypocrites and the righteous ones. He taught us about temporary and lasting treasures, about the two masters wherein we can only serve one. He then continued to narrate the two kinds of gates or ways, the wide and the narrow. There are also two kinds of prophets, the genuine and the false. He warned us to beware of the wolves in sheep's clothing and that we would recognize them by their fruit. Today, there will be two kinds of builders, two houses, two types of foundations, and two outcomes. After this sermon, it is by prayer that we will understand what it takes to be rooted and ready for life's challenges because whether we like it or not, they will come. 
crises and calamities of life will hit and hurt us. Days of trials and tests will surely happen to all of us, even to the best of people and the faithful ones amongst us. Let's look at the first contrast, the two builders, the wise and the foolish. Let me read to you the first part of verse 24 and 26. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man. Verse 26, and everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man. Before we look at the contrast, what are the similarities of the wise and foolish builders? A, they both heard the same words from Jesus. Jesus said, everyone then who hears. So we cannot really identify the difference at the start. There is nothing wrong that we can see and sense because they both listened and probably learned the same lessons from God. They heard the same sermons, read the same Bible, and probably recorded and reflected on the same truths and insights if we apply them today in our time. They were blessed and inspired by the same words of Jesus. Do you still remember the parable of the sower in Matthew chapter 13? Some called it better as the parable of the seeds or soils. It is actually a story about the word of God or the gospel or the seeds sown into the hearts of people. It's the same seed and the same farmer or sower who planted them. The difference was the kind of soils where the seeds fell on or were planted in. The different soils represented various kinds of people and their hearts. When trials and tests come, how they respond to the word of God that was sown in their hearts would reveal the kinds of hearts they have. Will they obey God's command and will or follow their own desires and comfort? B, the two builders had the same desire and dream. They both had the same desire to build their own houses. They had the same dream of building a home for themselves or with their families. They had the same plan to put up a shelter and place to stay permanently in. They also may have had the same plan and used the same materials to build their houses. I want you to understand that when you read the word house in the Bible, it refers to different things. It may refer to a country or nation, just like the house of Israel, or to the church, the household of faith, or to a clan or physical family, the house of Abraham or the house of David. And in our passage, it refers to the person's life. Jesus used the picture of a person building a house to mean building one's life. I want us to understand that when it comes to building a house, it must be rooted and ready to face life's challenges. If we want to be steady and secure when problems hit us, desires and plans do not matter most. If we want to have a secure life, our sincerity, the good hearts that we have do not amount to much when you are hit by big problems in life. You must be founded on something stronger and someone more powerful. Now let's look at the differences. What differentiated the wise builder from the foolish one? 
It's the surrendered life of obedience to God and His will. I repeat that. This is the main difference. It's the surrendered life of obedience to God and His will. What truly made the difference is not what they listened to, but if they applied what they have heard and learned. It's not how good and grand their dreams and desires were, but if they obeyed Jesus. I repeat that. It's not how good and grand their dreams and desires were, but if they obeyed Jesus. Did they put into practice what he had taught them? Verse 24 reads, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man. A wise builder is a person who obeys what he or she heard and learned from Jesus. This is opposite of a foolish builder, a person who does not do or apply what he or she heard and learned. Verse 26 reads, And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man. That's the big difference. It's not in the hearing, but in the doing. Did you see the clear difference? Did you understand the great contrast? My family and friends, we are not talking about how many classes and seminars you have attended, how many courses and degrees you have completed, nor how committed and passionate you are but if you applied what you have studied, that's the big difference. If we obeyed Jesus, did you follow what you have learned from God and His Word? This will make you a wise builder and not fall into being a foolish one if you do what you hear. A believer's life is rooted in true faith that is marked by faithful obedience to God. Two, the two foundations, the rock and the sand. And I read the first part of uh, the second part of verses 24 and 26. Like a foolish man who built his house on the rock, and verse 26, like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Our Lord Jesus said that the wise builder built his house on the rock, while the foolish builder built his house on the sand. Why would someone build his precious and permanent house on the sand? Isn't it? obvious that a sandy place will not be a good location to build a house. Doesn't he know that he cannot have a strong and steady foundation on sand? These are some of my questions while reflecting on the passage. Then it dawned on me what it takes to build a strong and sure foundation. These are probably the factors that caused the foolish man to build his house on the sun instead of building it upon the rock. Here are some realities about building a foundation. I am not an engineer nor an expert in construction, but here are some basic observations I've learned and understood about building foundations. A. Building a foundation is the priority. The foundation is the priority in any building and construction project. The place or location of the foundation is prepared and laid first. When one builds a house or structure, digging and laying, the foundation comes first before placing and putting structures on the ground and above the ground. 
why would someone miss this important priority? He may have wanted to build fast and easy. I repeat that. The foolish builder may have wanted to build fast and easy. Nagmamadali at gusto nyo lahat ay madali. He lacked patience and his focus was on the comfort and ease of doing things. These are probably what drove the foolish man to build his house on the sandy ground. He wanted to build fast and easy. And it is faster and easier to build a house on the sand because he wouldn't have to dig for hard ground and drill for a solid rock to build on. The priority of building a foundation requires patience and perseverance. If we relate this to our lives, building a strong and solid foundation of our lives requires us not to take shortcuts and easy ways. We must resist the temptations of pleasure and comfort. Let's prioritize building a sure and stable foundation in our lives, no matter how hard and difficult it may be. B, building a foundation is costly. Building a foundation is costly. Depending on how big and tall the structure you are building is, your foundation must equally be deeper, wider, and stronger. That will require not only hard work, but also cost more time and money. The foolish builder must have chosen to save costs. He must not have been willing to spend more time and money for the solid and more secure foundation. In the same way, if we save on time and money instead of spending and investing on what matters most in our lives, we are in danger of losing more and failing all. C. Building a foundation needs careful study. A wise builder has to diligently study the ground and the location where he is building. In order to have a stable and sure foundation, one has to carefully search and study the surroundings where he or she wants to build. A careful study leads us to think more, assess deeper, and process more facts and information. It would need the builder to discern what's better and applicable to the plan and purpose. In building the foundations of our lives, we cannot leave to chance something as important and essential as this. We must be intentional in passionately pursuing the building of our foundations that last our lifetime, especially during times of crises and challenges. To apply all these insights into our lives, we must understand the basic structures of our lives. And I would like to present to you three basic structures of life. One, superstructures. These are our accomplishments and achievements based on and resulted from our knowledge, abilities, and skills. These are the rewards and recognitions we receive out of our hard and excellent works. These are what people usually admire and applaud us for. These are also the sources of personal satisfaction and joy for us. Two, surface structures. Surface structures. These are the activities and practices based on our commitments and consistency. The surface structures of our lives are the good habits or productive disciplines we have developed 
through time, years, and experiences. They keep us composed and collected during ordinary and usual days of our lives. People are inspired and instructed by the way people live through their surface structures. Third and the last structure is the substructures. These are our character and spirituality through the empowerment of the Spirit and the fruits He brings about in our lives. Our substructures compose of our character and spirituality. This aspect of our lives are hidden from the eyes of people. Only you and God know the degree of your maturity emotionally and spiritually. With a surrendered life to the Spirit, our substructures will keep us stable and strong during the toughest times of our lives. We can face the worst of life's challenges and crises if our substructures are in place and are well built way in advance. Of all the structures of our lives, it's the substructures that are most crucial and important in facing life's challenges and crises. The superstructures and surface structures of life are the ones that will initially and immediately give way and go down during trying times. The well-built substructures are usually what stabilize and secure us from collapse and destruction during the toughest times of our lives. Our character and spirituality must be established by God's grace before trials and tests come so that we will not only survive but also soar highly for God's glory. A believer's life is rooted in true faith that is marked by faithful obedience to God. Three, the two outcomes, the two outcomes, the securely stable and totally ruined. Let me read to you verses 25 and 27 of our passage. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. Verse 27, and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Remember that both builders, the wise and the foolish, faced the same calamity. Both of them were hit by heavy rains, floods, and strong winds. However, the outcomes are different. The wise builder who built his house on the rock stood tall and stayed strong amidst the strong winds or strong storms. While the foolish builder who built his house on the sand immediately fell and collapsed. Jesus said it fell and great was the fall of it. Why was the fall great? It was not expected. The builder did not expect his house to collapse. He presumed that it would withstand the rains and strong winds of life. Here are some insights I want to highlight from this portion. A. The wise and the foolish went through the same crisis. No one is exempted. Whether you are a believer or not, you will face problems, small and big. There is no assurance of this life being a walk in the park or a bed of roses. 
whether you are godly or ungodly, you will encounter sufferings because we are living in a broken world. B. The houses remained useful and the same in the absence of a calamity. Yes, without trials and tests, everyone's foundations, including ours, would seem secure and stable. Without the presence of storms and shocks in our lives, we are confident and courageous. But that's where the danger lies. We would presume and pretend that we are strong and secure, but are actually standing on a sandy foundation. See, the foundations determine the outcomes. The foundations determine the outcomes. Don't be deceived. Your foundation will be exposed and revealed during times of troubles. It will either give way and collapse or stay strong and stable. The outcomes are determined by what and where your foundations are built. The foolish builder's life was destroyed and washed away while the wise builder's life stayed safe and secured all because he was founded on the rock, the solid rock of faithful obedience in God. On July 27, 2022, a strong earthquake jolted Luzon and must have awakened us around 8.30 a.m. here in Metro Manila. On that morning, we were staying in a new high-rise condominium in Mandaluyong City. The earthquake was around 7.0 magnitude in its epicenter in the province of Abra. After a few seconds, we heard minor cracking sounds from different parts of the 51-story building. A few seconds more or later, cracks on the walls in the bedrooms and living area began to appear. Immediately after the earthquake on that day, we reported the cracks and damages on the property to the building engineers. They assured us that as long as the cracks are not found on the concrete post or beams of the unit, we are safe. They said that the foundation and columns of the whole building are strong and its integrity was not compromised by the said earthquake. Unlike what happened in Hyatt Terraces Hotel in Baguio City in 1990 and the Ruby Tower in Binondo, Manila in 1968, the building we were staying in has a solid and strong foundation. That's why it was not ruined nor did it collapse during the earthquake. In closing, how do we build our foundation on the rock and be wise builders of our lives? How can we be rooted and ready for life's challenges? One, obey God's commands immediately. Obey God's commands immediately. Our Lord Jesus Christ differentiated the wise builder who built his house on the rock from the foolish builder who builds his house on the sand. Definitely, we must build our foundation on the rock. The rock in the Bible usually refers to God or Jesus in the New Testament. But in the immediate context of our passage, the rock Jesus refers to is the wholehearted obedience to his words and will, specifically his sermon on the mount. We are building our foundation on the rock when we are following and living out his teachings and truths. When all structures of our lives are founded on faithful obedience to God, then we are founded on the rock.
I repeat that. When all the structures of our lives are founded on faithful obedience to God, then we are founded on the rock. We can be confident and courageous in facing life's challenges when they come. Two, hold on to. Hold on to His promises consistently. Hold on to His promises consistently. We have a God who is always faithful. He is always true to His words and promises. We can hold on to all His promises because He is our true and trustworthy Lord. We can be rooted and ready to face life's challenges because we can hold on to all of God's promises for us. Three, trust God completely. Trust God completely. My family and friends, the Lord loves us so much. His will and ways are all for our good. During times of difficulty, He may seem to be far and absent. But don't be deceived by the enemy. God will not leave us nor forsake us. We can trust Him completely. Please listen carefully to one more reality I want to add regarding building a foundation. Building a foundation must be done before the crisis and challenges come. Building a foundation must be done before the crisis and challenges come. When troubles come and your foundation is not in place and well built, your life will crumble and collapse. If you do not trust and obey God during pleasant times, it will be much more difficult to follow and trust Him during tough times. If you wait for crisis, to happen before you trust and obey the Lord, it would be too late. Hindi pwede na natutunan ko na naman ito. Alam ko na ang mabuti o totoo, pero saka ko na gagawin o susundin. If you do not apply what you have learned today, what makes you so sure that when tough times come, you will be able to apply them? If you are not faithful in giving your tithes today, how will you be able to give more when God blesses you with more? If you do not trust Him during pleasant times, how will you trust Him during difficult times? If you do not love the people in your life right now, how can you love other people that God will bring to your life later. So if the Spirit reveals something in your heart right now that you need to change or do, do it according to God's will and ways by trusting and obeying Him alone immediately. You may consider building your foundation right now by obeying Jesus wholeheartedly. You need to build your foundation on the solid ground, not on the shaky and sandy grounds of life. A believer's life is rooted in true faith that is marked by faithful obedience to God. Let's close our time in a word of prayer. Lord God, your words are true. What you have told us and deposited in our hearts right now will have the power through the Spirit to change our lives if we do them, if we respond in faithful obedience to you. We pray, Lord God, that as you have instructed us and inspired us to obey you today, we pray, Father, that our foundations will be built upon the solid rock through our Lord Jesus Christ in faithful obedience to you. 
Father, I pray that whatever trials, whatever troubles that we face in life, we will be rooted and ready to face them all. Because through the Spirit and with faithful obedience that you have provided and given us, we can stood tall and stand strong because of you, because of your grace and through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, it's a blessing to see all of you joining us in worshiping the Lord. I pray that the Lord's word and message for us will continue to be deposited in our hearts and that I pray that we will indeed respond in faithful obedience to God. Please do take time to reflect on this message or word of the Lord for us and also take time to pray for one another and share this truths the Lord highlighted for you personally in your growth group so that everybody could learn from what the Lord has also deposited in your hearts. I would like also to invite the parents with the young kids. We will have a Sunday school uh, fellowship for the young children after the worship service at 11 o'clock. So for the parents, please log into our Zoom room so that uh, your children can join us at 11 o'clock. Thank you very much and God bless us all and have a wonderful Sunday.